Good morning. Really cool to have you all here. Happy Friday. Um, we're going to continue talking about organic chemistry today. Uh, we're talking about how to build the organic molecules from the alkyl groups and stuff like that. Uh, today at 1 o'clock, 1.10 officially, uh, you'll turn in the Lewis Structures Lab. Uh, problem set number two will be up. We'll talk about that, which is a mixture of hybridization and Lewis structures, as well as the newer molecular orbital theory stuff. We'll take quiz two. Quiz two for you will not have a molecular orbital question. Quiz three next week will. All right, so just let you know that next week, molecular orbital question, but not this week, okay? And then we'll start the valence bond versus molecular orbital lab, which is just a way to compare the two theories, see what's happening. Should be pretty cool, and it will also really help you to cement the molecular orbital theory stuff in your mind. That's the thought anyway. Questions, any of that? We left off on uh, Wednesday talking about the alkanes. Now, alkanes are the simplest of the different families in organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is kind of a trip at first, I won't lie. And I'm trying in this section to introduce uh, the basic concepts so that when you come in, you'll know that ethanol and ethanol are actually different, all right? And when I took OCHEM, totally snowed me over, all right? So my goal is not to have that happen to you, all right? Now, if you're not gonna take organic chemistry, you're probably like, rah, 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 rah. Uh, For all of you, uh, knowing of these names will help you to understand your world a little bit more. And I think that's an important part of any class. So you'll recognize things now on the back of labels that before maybe were kind of alien to you. So. There's use even if you're not gonna take organic chemistry, but definitely if you're gonna take organic chemistry, yeah. Um, butane is a four carbon alkane. And to get to the name butane, you take an alkyl group, which gets the generic symbol R, and you put a hydrogen on the end of it. So we talked about the alkyl groups on Wednesday. Methyl was the simplest one. It was a carbon that was sp3 tetrahedral. Three of the four spots were hydrogen, and the fourth spot could connect to something. So a methyl group with a hydrogen became methane. If you take the YL off the methyl, making it meth, <laughs> and then add A and E to it, that's where the name came from. So on Wednesday, we went through methane, ethane, propane, and now this one here is butane. And butane comes from a butyl group, a butyl group is just a series of sp3 hybridized, i.e. tetrahedral carbons. And every spot in the butyl group is taken up by hydrogen except for one at the very end, and that's where you can connect things to. So taking a butyl group and putting a hydrogen on the end, which is like one of these hydrogens, or this one right there is a better example, that's what makes butane. Uh, it turns a butyl group, which isn't a compound, into butane. Um, the generic formula for alkanes is always CnH2n plus 2. So in this example, there are four carbons, one, two, three, four. So if this formula is right, then 4n times 2 plus 2, which is 10, should be the number of hydrogens. And if you count up, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And all alkanes have this formula, which is cool. There's a bunch of organic chemicals out there, all right? And you won't know what a lot of them are, but if you see this pattern, you'll know it's an alkane at the very least, which can be really helpful. Sometimes you'll hear alkanes referred to as saturated hydrocarbons. Uh, if every carbon is sp3, which means no double bonds, no triple bonds, stuff like that, and if every carbon has either a hydrogen or a single bond to another carbon, that's what makes it saturated. And uh, saturated fats, which are available in a lot of meat products, by the way, but anyway, saturated fats are just fats where the fat part is saturated with hydrogen. And unsaturated then means you have a double bond. We'll talk about that later. Any questions about that stuff so far? Yeah. So hydrogen's like, what does it do compared to the double bond um, is it for the saturated fats? So like make it, I mean, you don't have to go to it if you don't want to, but um. no, 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 it's okay. So uh, Clifford, when I sh shook your hand once versus twice, 
uh, going from single to double, a uh, couple of things to report there. First of all, your bond length was shorter. All right, Clifford, I haven't seen you in a long time. Um, it also made the bond energy go up. All right, so Kaylin could break us up as easy. But more importantly than anything, we're gonna see that alkanes are great fuels. All right, you burn them, they're awesome. All right, so methane, natural gas. Butane is actually in cigarette lighters. Just say no kids. But that's really all canes are good for. The excitement in organic chemistry comes from double bonds, triple bonds, oxygens, nitrogens, and stuff like that. That's a very generic way to talk about OCAM, but uh, that's one answer. That's a 30 second answer to your question, and we'll see more coming. Okay, cool. Good, great question. All right. Uh, so this is a question we looked at on Wednesday, but I'll throw up again. It says, which of the following could be an alkane? All right. So first of all, alkanes have just carbon and hydrogen. We will look at some examples of things that have more than carbon and hydrogen, but this one would certainly not be an alkane. That's something different. And then for these four right here, which all have just carbon and hydrogen, you want this N carbons and then 2N plus 2. So as an example, C5H10, N would be 5, and 10 would not follow this pattern because 2 times 5, 10 plus 2, you would expect to have 12 hydrogens for that particular molecule if it's an alkane. So as we talked about on Wednesday, the only one that follows it is number three. So answer C. If N is 14, then 14 times 2, 28 plus 2 would be 30 hydrogens. And I don't know anything about C14H30, but I can at least recognize that that's going to be an alkane. All right. Um, also on Wednesday, we talked about the importance of isomers. And in the last couple chapters, we've been dealing a lot with isomers, and this is where we're going with this. All right, isomers are really important in chemistry. Now, an isomer is just the same number of atoms, but rearranged in space, and you can't rotate one into the other. So N-butane, which is the butane I showed you earlier, is a four-carbon system, and everything around those carbons is just a hydrogen. You've got single bonds and hydrogen. But seriously, you could take this CH3 off, this methyl group off, and put it where this hydrogen is. And this hydrogen is going to go then off this carbon. And if you do that, you end up making an isomer of N-butane. All right, so this thing right here also is C4H10. It is an alkane. It has the right formula, but it's not obviously the same as this one right here. Little n right there, that stands for all the carbons in a row. I think it's called normal. It's some kind of German derived, a lot of this stuff was developed in Germany. But anyway, just think of it as like a normal version and all the carbons are in a row. So 2-methylpropane is an isomer. Now, how they got this name, all right, is there's two mantras in OCHEM you've got to know. And the first one is right here. You always look for the longest chain of carbon atoms. So what that means is if you put your pen down on one carbon, you want to try and go through as many carbons as you can, but you can't go backwards, all right? So I've got one, two, three. I can't go backwards, one, two, three. And you can't pick your pen up and like do this kind of thing. So one, two, three is a longest chain, but you could also do it up here. You could go one, two, three, one, two, three. There's all kinds of different ways to do it three carbons in my longest chain would be a propane, all right? So let's just think about it as this is my propane group. But instead of having N-propane, which would have a hydrogen right there, there's a CH3 group, which is a methyl group. So this compound you could think of as 2-methylpropane. The longest chain is propane. There's a methyl CH3 group off the second carbon, 2-methylpropane. Yeah, and the two, um, you know what like, exactly that refers to? Um, yeah, uh, so in the propane part, all right, it goes like one, two, three. And so this would be the second carbon. Ah, uh, I see, okay. Cool, no, ask these kind of, there's no dumb questions, ask me anything. We'll look at numbering here in a little bit more too and stuff, but yeah, but that's that's where the two comes from, so good. All right. 
Uh, as the alkanes get bigger, you have more and more isomers, all right? Pentane is a five carbon system. It's a pentyl group with a hydrogen on the end. So the end version, again, is just all the carbons right in a row, and you've got a hydrogen on the end. But you could take this CH3, for example, and move it to one of the inside carbons. So this compound right here is 2-methylbutane. Now let's look at this a little closer. Longest chain. So put your pen down, or my pointer in this case, and you want to go through as many carbons as you can, but you can't go backwards, can't pick up your pen. So one, two, three, four, that's good. But you could have went one, two, three, four. You could have went one, two, three, four, but you wouldn't want to go one, two, three. All right, that's a shorter chain. Longer chain is what you want to do with these crazy things. So four carbons is better than three carbons. That's why this is a butane, all right? Now, one, two, three, four carbons right there. The methyl group is one of the pieces that's not on. Now, the other mantra of organic chemistry that we talked about on Wednesday, in addition to longest chain, is you want to use the smallest number possible. So let's go back to my longest chain, one, two, three, four. If you start counting on this carbon, one, two, three, four, this third carbon has a methyl group. So one name for this compound would be 3-methylbutane. But if you start on this carbon, one, two, three, four, you could also call this compound 2-methylbutane. And in OCHEM, smallest number is the second most important mantra uh, to use. So 2-methylbutane is the correct name here. 3-methylbutane is like, you know, I ain't knowing what's going on. It, it, chemists can figure it out, but it's kind of kind of cheesy. <laughs> All right, so longest chain of carbon atoms, smallest number, you got it. Now, down here with this thing, you've taken two methyl groups and put them both on the middle ones. Any way you want to count it, these are going to be a longest chain of three carbon atoms. All right, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. So let's go one, two, three. What the heck? So this is the longest chain. It's a propane. Notice that the central carbon, the number two, has a methyl group here and a methyl group there. If you have more than one alkyl group, we use the Greek prefixes, so that's why it's a dimethylpropane. And really, because they're both off the second carbon, they each need their own number. So this one would be 2 comma 2 dimethylpropane. The first two is for the first methyl, the second two is for the second methyl. I'll show you better, better examples of the numbering here in a little bit. But the important part here is that first of all, as the alkanes get bigger, more and more isomers. And the second thing, longest chain, smallest number. Saying is a covalently bonded molecule consisting of six carbon atoms and 14 hydrogen atoms. Each hydrogen atom forms one covalent bond, and each carbon atom forms four covalent bonds. These 20 atoms can be rearranged into five different compounds called structural isomers, each having slightly different properties. Notice how the boiling points of each isomer changes. Arranging the carbon atoms in a straight chain produces N-hexane. Moving the end carbon to the second carbon position and rearranging hydrogens produces 2-methylpentane. Sliding the methyl group to the third carbon position produces 3-methylpentane. Moving the methyl group to the fourth carbon position appears to make 4-methylpentane. But wait! Rotating the molecule shows that it's identical to 2-methylpentane. Now, adding the end carbon to the second carbon position produces 2,3-dimethylbutane. Moving the methyl group to the second carbon position produces 2,2-dimethylbutane. Sliding both methyl groups to the third carbon position appears to make 3,3-dimethylbutane. But wait again. Rotating the molecule shows it's identical to 2,2-dimethylbutane. These are the five isomers of hexane. 
So as you start to have more and more carbons, you have more and more different isomers. And you can see in this video there were the boiling points listed. The boiling points can change quite a bit. We'll talk about why those boiling points are changing more uh, in another chapter here coming up. But for right now, just realize it's a big importance. It has to do with polarity, by the way. That's the punchline. But anyway, uh, yeah, knowing it. Now, here are two dimethyl butanes, this one and this one. And the methyl groups here are off the same carbon, so it's 2,2-dimethyl. Two, two but again, you could count 1, 2, 3 if you go right to left, making it look like 3, 3. But again, smaller numbers are king in organic chemistry, so call it 2, 2. 2,3-dimethyl uh, two, shows why each methyl group gets its own number, because now the methyl groups are not on the same carbon. One is on this carbon, one's on that one, so each methyl group would get its own number. So, when you want to name a compound, all right, like this one right here, I want to talk about some techniques that have helped me. Now, again, I'm an inorganic chemist, so maybe I'm not the best person to talk about these things with you. Um, that being said, uh, maybe because I'm not an organic chemist, that's a good thing too. Now, I'm going to rearrange it just a little bit because I don't have a lot of space here on my board. So this compound is a compound that you can name, all right? And if you showed me this compound, you said, oh, Dr. Russell, what would this compound be? All right, so what I would do first of all, when, especially when you're learning, all right, is I would figure out just with my finger <laughs> what the longest chain of carbons is. So for example, if you go left to right, three carbons, woohoo! Longer chain, of course, you can get this way. All right, so this would be one, two, three, four, five, six. Six carbons is longer than three carbons. So you definitely want the longer carbons. Now, Clifford thinks this is number one, two, and all of these, and I think this is number one and all of these, both fine. All right, doesn't really matter. And I'll tell you some ways to figure that out here in a little bit. Once you figure out what the longest chain is, it's really a good idea, I think, at first to circle what you want to call the longest chain. And that's what I tried to do in red right here. If you circle it, then those are going to be part of the base alkane name. So in this longest chain, like I said, one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, that's a hexyl group. And as an alkane, it would be hexane. Okay. So all of those carbons that I circled there are part of this hexane, and you don't need a special name for that one. But you can see either out there or right here that there's a CH3, a methyl group, that's not part of the hexane. So this is going to be some kind of methyl hexane uh, you put right there. Now the last thing is that you've got to figure out the smallest number possible for this methyl group. And this is where I really recommend this. Start counting, and you can even put numbers next to them in both directions. So notice I started on the quote unquote bottom and went up. So using this way, the methyl group would look like it's off the fifth carbon. But it's easy to miss this. Also do it the opposite way. So in this case, that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. You can see here, this also could be a second carbon. So both second and five would both be good examples here. Smallest number is the way. So if you call it five methyl, that wouldn't be as cool as calling it two methyl hexane, which is what you see right there. So notice what I did. All right, I first figured out what the longest chain was and I circled it. And that way, whatever that chain is in the name, I don't have to touch any of those things at all. But there's almost always something not in the chain and that's okay. So at first, especially, if you number from both directions and you can write it down like I did or do it in your head if this is cool with you, you don't want to call it 5-methylhexane because smallest number, longest chain, that smallest number is really important. So 2-methylhexane would be the best name here. Any questions on that? So 
find the longest chain. That's the longest chain part of it. Then I recommend that you number the chain from the end from both sides. And make, some people are really good at this, and honestly, I was really bad at it. So that's why I literally, and still to this day, once in a while, will number both sides just to double check. All right, I think, oh yeah, that's it. And then anyway, figure out what your number, smallest number is. And then that smallest number goes in front. If there's more than one methyl, you'll use Greek prefixes. So you could have a dimethyl, trimethyl, blah, 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 and stuff like that. Um, should be pretty cool. Whoops, I didn't mean to get rid of that. Um, any questions on that process? Okay, so now here's another example. Now these things can get pretty funky, but it's all doable if you follow these rules. And again, the first part is you just have to figure out what the longest chain is. <clears throat> now, in this one, there's a couple different things you could do, all right? So for example, this CH2CH3 is a two carbon group. There's also a two carbon group right here. So you could circle both of these ways, all right? But it is a little better for the numbering if you have pieces not in the chain to do it down there. And this is just something you kind of have to figure out. So in this problem, what I did is I found there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons in a row. That's the longest chain. Now, if you did it down here, you'd have more carbons not in your chain. So I went down this way, all right, and that keeps these simple groups uh, right there. So anyway, then what I would do is I would count from both directions. Now you can see that the answer is to go from the bottom to the top, but let's say you started up here. You'd have one, two, three, four, five, six, <laughs> all right? Now you'd have, so three, uh, so what, three, four, five, and six. So you would have a uh, three, four, six trimethyl, because these are methyl groups, all right, and they're not. Now, this bad boy, or bad girl, bad thing, whatever you wanna call it, is an ethyl group. It's a two carbon system. And you bet you can have those not part of the chain as well. So uh, three, four, six trimethyl, four, three, four, excuse me, five ethyl, five ethyl, three, four, six trimethyl heptane would be one name for this. Now again, the heptane comes from seven carbons. Heptyl to alkane becomes heptane. And on the heptane, there was a methyl, a methyl, a methyl, and an ethyl. So the three methyls you'll combine into a trimethyl. The ethyl will be by itself. By the way, we have a choice which goes first. And chemists love to alphabetize. You don't look at the prefix, you look at the base. So ethyl comes before methyl. So like dimethyl would still go later and stuff like that. Anyway, the way that I numbered it just a little bit ago, three, four, six trimethyl, uh, five ethyl has bigger numbers than this version. So if you start from this side, it's a three ethyl, two, four, five. Those are smaller numbers and cooler in organic chemistry than the other version that I talked about. So again, that's why numbering both ways is really important. Yeah. Does the ethyl always come first? Um, if you have a choice, Chi, between an ethyl and a methyl, the E of ethyl will always come first, absolutely. Um, ignore the numbers, all right? It's the E of ethyl which makes it before the M of, of methyl. If you had a methyl and a propyl, which is, which is possible, the propyl would come after the methyl because P is after M. Cool question. Other questions? Let's try it yourself. Okay, so here's an organic chemical. Woohoo! All right, whoopie doo. Uh, this compound is a lot simpler. Now, you'll see organic chemicals listed in a bunch of different ways. Sometimes the hydrogens are above, sometimes they're to the right or the left and stuff, so just get used to it. But again, the important part, carbon, four bonds, that's it. That's all it does. It always wants four, no more, no less. Uh, stuff like that. So that carbon has two hydrogens and two single bonds on it, all right? So the question is, what is the name of this compound, all right? Well, there's all kinds of variations up here as you can see. 
First, what you want to do is figure out the longest chain of carbon atoms, all right? And again, what I would do for that is uh, like literally put your pen down, either actually or just thinking about it. And you want to put your carbon, your pen pointer through as many carbons as you can. So I can get one, two, three, four carbons if I go that way. I can get one, two, three, four if I go that way, four this way. But what you don't want is only three carbons, all right? Because three carbons is less than four carbons, not as cool. So if it's a four carbon system, all right, that means that the base is gonna be a butane. All right, it's not gonna be pentane because we don't have five carbons in a row. It's not gonna be propane because propane is less than four. Uh, so we want the longest number of carbon atoms total. Any questions how we got to the butane part? Okay, now you can do this any way you want. I'm gonna use these four right here as the butane base. If I count left to right, it would be one, two, three. And that's important because there are two methyl groups in the way I'm doing it that aren't of the butane. So it's going to be a dimethyl butane, one of these. So one, two, three, looks like it's three, three dimethyl butane. What do you think? No. No, good, why? Can be two, two. Bam count both ways. And again, I was really bad at this, so I'm really emphasizing it. Le I, I, left to right, all right? In English, we read left to right. It seems easy to think about it, but chemists uh, sometimes have molecules where you've got to read right to left on these. So yeah, so one, two, three, four is a better way to do it. You'll get a two, two dimethyl instead of a three, three dimethyl. So the very best name here, two, two dimethyl butane, right on. It's uh, not quite the same. Oh, it's a two, three. Okay, right, right, right. Um, so count both ways, all right? And again, you don't have to do it along this axis, all right? Kaylin maybe was looking at it like this, and maybe John was looking at it like that. That's cool, all right? And you should, in your mind, like try these different possibilities just to make sure. Any questions? Okay, so now that we know about alkanes, now that we've dealt with the isomers and how to name them, we can start looking at some of the other families in organic chemistry. Alkanes had a beginning and an end, all right? And there was really no reason why you couldn't take the ends of the alkane and put them together. All right, so instead of having like a CH3, like down here, instead of having a CH3 here and a CH3 there, you could seriously think about anyway putting them together in a chain. Now to do that, carbon, only four bonds. So you pull out a hydrogen here, you pull out a hydrogen here, now each of these carbons has like a spot to make something and you could connect it. So a cycloalkane, is another type of family in organic chemistry. It's absolutely related to the alkanes, but they're different. Alkanes and cycloalkanes have sp3 tetrahedral carbon. No double bonds, no oxygens, no nitrogen, stuff like that. So they have very similar properties. These are good fuels too, like I was talking with Clifford earlier. But the difference is, is they always make cyclic structures. Uh, they do have different formulas. So an alkane and a cycloalkane are not the same kind of compound. They have a different formula. They won't be isomers of each other, but they are very similar. If you have six carbons in a row, like right here, this is called cyclohexane. So you use the base name of the alkane, but you give it a cyclo beginning. So instead of hexane or the hexyl group, you'd put a cyclo to the beginning, take the YL off hexyl and make it hex. Then you'd add A and E to the end of it. Cyclohexane is how you get these names. Uh, chemists get really bored writing hydrogens all the time and carbon honestly can be kind of annoying too. So this type of structure is a, called a line drawing and you can absolutely start using this. Every vertice is a carbon. We talked about this briefly in last week's problem set. We'll see it again today. 
So this CH2 right here is represented by that point. Now again, the hip chemist knows that carbon wants how many bonds? Four. Four, thank you for bearing with me. Yeah, it wants four bonds. So you can see there's two bonds showing, two single bonds to other carbons. Anything that's missing there is gonna be a hydrogen. So this carbon is connected to that carbon and that carbon, because there's two more spaces, that's where those hydrogens pop in. At first, line drawings are a little weird, but they really are convenient. Uh, lazy chemists of the world unite. They can be really cool. Cyclohexane, cyclopentane, cyclopropane, cyclobutane would be four carbons and stuff. You can't have anything smaller than a propane, though, because you have to have a link. And if you only had two carbons like ethane, you can't make it link to itself. Any questions? So the question here, same formulas, but which one could be a cycloalkane? Now, <clears throat> cycloalkanes have two less hydrogens than the alkanes did. So instead of being CnH2n plus two, these are CnH2n. So if you look at all these possibilities, all right, two of the formulas have CnH2n properties. So for example, if N is two, then two times two would be four, possibly. If N is five, then two times five, 10. This could be a cycloalkane. But only one of these can actually be a cycloalkane, and which one is it? Yep, that's right, the second one. The first one has the right formula, but it doesn't have enough carbons to make a cyclic, all right? If you have just two carbons, you can't make a cycle, all right? You have to have at least three, like a triangle to make it happen. This is something else, and we'll talk about that here coming up uh, too. So in this case, I wanted to show that when you get to these, there's, there's other things that have this formula, <laughs> all right? And just FYI, alkanes only, CNH2N plus two. But some of these other things will have different formulas. You can just think about which ones could be. Questions? Halogens, al oxygens, nitrogens, double bonds are much more exciting to O chemists than just the carbons. Carbons and hydrogens, when they're just single bonds, are basically, like I said earlier, just fuels. They're great for burning, all right? But that's about all you can do with them. One of the ways to make an organic chemical more exciting is to add a halogen. And the halogen, just a quick preview, halogens are group 7A elements. So fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. Now, fluorine is so small that it doesn't react as much, so it's not as much fun, if you will, as chlorine, bromine, and iodine, but sometimes fluorine is thrown in here too. So instead of having a methane with a CH4, where there was a hydrogen right here, what the heck, let's put an iodine on there, all right? So CH3I is a possibility. These things, there are two ways that they're named, and uh, I don't know which one, honestly, is the dominant version. The classic way of naming one of these, CH3 is a methyl group, and there's an iodine, iodide on it, so methyl iodide is the classic way of naming this. However, methyl iodide almost sounds like it's an iodide with a negative one charge, and that may or may not be right, depending on the formula. So a newer way of calling it is you use the base alkane name. So if this was a hydrogen again, it would be methane, and you call it iodo. So you change the iodine to an iodo. Chlorine would become chloro. Bromine would become bromo. So iodomethane is an iodine atom on a methane, quote unquote. You pull one of the boring hydrogens off and put the iodine right there, good to go. You can have all kinds of possibilities. <clears throat> uh, this one right here, it, the iodine is on the second carbon of three carbons. Three carbons would be propane. Because it's an iodine off the second one, two iodopropane would be the name. Sometimes people will refer to this also as a 2-propyl iodide because the propane, propyl group is three carbons and the iodine's off the second one. So just 
remember that these things have two names. And again, I'm just the messenger. <laughs> I'm not an organic chemist. I'm just letting you know what I've seen. But uh, it shouldn't be too hard to knock these out. Yeah, John. So on the uh, cyclo alkanes, mm -hmm. if you add like two an oxygen in there, would that work? Yeah. Would still did that work? Using what we've d learned so far, we haven't gotten to oxygen yet, but learning what we've learned so far, you could have a cyclohexane, which is six carbons in a row, and you could put an iodine off one of them. So you could have iodocyclohexane. Yeah, absolutely. The possibilities are pretty pretty limitless right here. And it could still fit like in like a circle formation ish with that uh, iodine or like an oxygen just in the lines. You bet. Uh, remember, John, that carbon always, and I mean, I mean always, I don't, unless you're, all right, Aiden's not here, but, <laughs> but anyway, 99.9% .9 of the time, carbon's four bonds, all right? So your cycloalkane would have two bonds to the other carbons in the cyclo ring, and you'd have one hydrogen, but then you'd have an iodine and stuff like that. Okay. We'll talk about oxygen coming up, but I can at least make these reference. Okay. Does this rag smell like chloroform to you? <laughs> chloroform is actually an alkyl halide as well. All right, how chloroform you put over your mouth, people fall, you know, are knocked out supposedly. So, anyway, just to let you know, there's a lot of practical abuses of organic chemistry. All right. Just say no. Anyway, I, about this time you want to start drinking. I mean, about this time we should go to another family. Jokes get worse as the term goes on. Another family in organic chemistry is called an alcohol. Now, I make a lot of jokes, just say no, 19 in Canada, blah, blah, blah. Drinking alcohol is by far the most common of the alcohols, and drinking alcohol is ethanol. Now, ethanol, the name, comes from an ethyl group, which is two carbons, all right? C, uh, CH3, CH2 is the ethyl group. But this thing has an oxygen on the end. So what John was asking about, this is one version of how you can do oxygen in organic chemistry. <clears throat> but ethanol, again, is only one of the alcohols. All right, there's a whole bunch of them. Ethanol, again, is drinking alcohol, but you could have methanol, which would be a methyl group with an OH. This OH right here is good old oxygen. This oxygen has two bonds and two lone pairs. We talked about how formal charges of oxygen are zero if oxygen either has two single bonds and two lone pairs. It can also have a double bond and two lone pairs, but we'll talk about those later. This oxygen right here, two single bonds and two lone pairs. And one side of the oxygen is connected to a hydrogen. So ethanol is an ethyl group with an OH on the end. Take the YL off and add ANOL. You can also have, of course, methanol, which would be a methyl group and an OH. Now again, ethanol, you can arguably drink if you're at a concert. No, if you're uh, feeling celebratory, but seriously, you don't want to drink the other alcohols, man, all right? Especially methanol. Methanol will make you go blind. And when prohibition was big in the United States in the 20s, 1920s that is, uh, a lot of times the unpurified alcohol would have methanol in it. And so people went blind, and so a lot of jokes come around about going blind. Um, this is the structure. Again, sp3 tetrahedral carbons. Here's the oxygen. There's two lone pairs on it, but we're not seeing them uh, because they're kind of invisible. But again, it's a bent structure. All right. Cool. Um, propanol is the next uh, alcohol. So you take a propyl group and you put the OH on the end of it. Now, notice here the numbering. Alcohols are more exciting to chemists than the other ones. And it's not just because you can drink the ethanol, all right? The alcohol is a more reactive group. The CH3 groups just kind of sit there, all right, and look pretty, arguably. But the OH, we're going to see, you can do some cool stuff to it. So this compound is a propyl group. It's three carbons with an OH off the end. And that OH is off the end carbon. Now, remembering that smallest number is one of the important parts here, you could call this one, two, three. You could call it a three propanol. But again, the smallest number is important, so one propanol would be the best name. This is another example of how organic chemistry is very dynamic. 
when I took organic chemistry and uh, graduate school and all this kind of stuff, one propanol was the name. <laughs> but everything changes. So organic chemists came out with some new rules and the new rules instead of putting the one on the end you put the one next to the OL and there are some good reasons for this. I still find this a little awkward but um, it is good. You will see this compound listed as both one propanol and propan one all and they're both fine. All right you use the one that works for you. This is the newer, cooler version, and there are some neat reasons why that one's next to the OL. But that being said, good old classic rock people like myself, I guess, like the old school way, uh, you're, you'll see them both, okay. Here's one propanol or propan one all, and you can absolutely have propan two all or two propanol, all right? Two propanol or propan two all is actually more common. If you've ever uh, bought an isopropyl alcohol at Fred Meyer's or Home Depot, something like that, isopropyl alcohol is 2-propanol. It's a little bit more common. Um, the reactivity of an alcohol does change a little bit depending on which carbon it is. So that's why it's kind of important. Notice right here, this is kind of the, I call it the Microsoft Word version where you can just write in like a line. And here it's easy to put the OH. But here, chemists will a lot of times put the OH in a parenthesis to show you that that OH is connected to the last carbon. So just FYI, you'll see that too. But again, all of these alcohols, some kind of alkyl group with an OH on the end. Types of alcohols. <clears throat> Once in a while, you'll hear about primary alcohols, secondary alcohols, and tertiary alcohols. Now, in this class, I'm just throwing it out there in case you hear it in the future. But primary, secondary, tertiary affects the reactivity of your alcohol in a big time way. So if you hear about these things, primary alcohols have only one, uh, you look at the carbon that the OH is connected to. And if that carbon has only one carbon connected to it, it's a primary. So that was probably as clear as mud. Here's ethanol, CH3, CH2OH. This is the carbon you look at. And if that carbon has just one carbon connected to it, it's primary. Now, 2-propanol, like I said, is a little bit more common and a little bit more reactive than the other propanol. And that's because it's a secondary alcohol. We don't need to go into why it is. But to figure that out, you look at the carbon that the OH is connected to. And you can, because carbon, once again, wants four bonds, you could have it connected to two, one, or even three carbons. If this carbon has two carbons and one hydrogen, it's considered a secondary alcohol. And then finally, tertiary alcohols, the carbon with the OH is surrounded by carbon. There's no hydrogens connected to this central carbon. These are the most reactive, arguably, and they uh, can do lots of interesting things. So this is 2-methylpropan-2-ol or 2-methyl-2-propanol. Either name is totally fine. This is more just informational, uh, but that's what it means if you hear about primary, secondary, and tertiary. Alcohols are great starting materials for making lots of things, all right? So when you wanna make plastics for remote controls, you'll probably start with alcohols and turn them eventually into the plastic. So let's do another name just to make sure. I don't care about primary, secondary, blah, blah, blah. This would be a secondary carbon. And again, I know that because I look at the carbon with the OH on it, and this carbon is connected to two carbons. That's why it's secondary, but that's neither here nor there. This is an example of a compound now that does have more than just hydrogen on it. So this is an alcohol, and you know it because the OH is there, and the OH is connected to a carbon. So like before, to name something like that, longest chain, smallest numbers. Longest chain, if you put your pen down, you can go through four carbons, left or right. That would be a butane if it was an alkane but it's not a butane, it's an alcohol, all right? So initially, you'd probably call it a butanol, butanol, which means it's a four carbon system and an alcohol. But if there's a choice where that OH can go, you also need a number, all right? 
This OH, if you count left to right, would be one, two, three. So butan three all would be that name. But again, smallest number is, is king. Counting on this side, one, two, three, four. It could also be butan two all or two butanol. So this one you definitely want to call butan two all or two butanol. You'd be good to go. Any question? As if it wasn't enough, you can have more than one OH group off an organic compound. And if you've ever used antifreeze <coughs> in your car, you're using what's called a diol, all right? So a diol, di is two, two alcohols. Ethylene glycol is a two carbon system. Ethyl is eth like CH3CH2, two carbons. But instead of having just CH3CH2, you actually have two OHs off of it. And the, the common name is ethylene glycol. Now the fancy name that organic chemists like to use, and honestly is better, is ethane one two diol. <laughs> now, where this name came from, besides a bad part of our anatomy, um, this is an ethane. If it was all hydrogens, two carbons would be an ethane. And you have an OH off the first and the second one, so it's a diol. Ethane one two, the one two shows the numbers where they come from, so that would be ethane one two diol. You could have an ethane one one diol where there would be an OH off here and this would be just a hydrogen. So again, these numbers can be really cool. Propylene glycol is also used as an antifreeze as well as ethylene glycol. These are one two diols, but you have three carbons, a little bit higher molar mass on these, all right? So again, propane would be the alkane name. We have two OHs, so it's a diol, two alcohols, and those alcohols are off the first and the second carbons. <clears throat> And of course, you could have more than two. Glycerol, AKA glycerin, if you used it, is a triol. Now, glycerin is a really fascinating substance. It flows like molasses, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, glycerol, which is also known as glycerin, is a triol, three OHs. So glycerol is actually propane. It has a th one, two, three carbons, like a propane, all right? And you put each, an OH, off each of the carbons. So the fancy name is propane one, two, three triol. It's a propane because that's what the alkane would be. One, two, three OHs is the triol. Here's butane, one, two, three, triol. Here's octane, two, three, four, triol. There's actually several of these. And again, just in your own mind, don't worry about what you could do with them, but each OH is a site of potential reactivity. And for chemists, woohoo. Okay. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> ethers are isomers of alcohols. So, so far, our alcohols and diols and triols have had an OH on the end of them. There's no reason why the oxygen has to be with an hydrogen. You could put it in the middle of carbon, all right? And that makes what's called an ether. Now, ethers like alcohols have two ways of naming it. And when I started teaching organic chemistry here at Mount Hood, there was only this old school way. So I'm gonna teach you the old school way first, and we'll talk about the new way. The old way of talking about it is you'd think about what alkyl groups were connected to the oxygen. So this is an example of an ethyl group, CH2CH3. This is a CH2CH3, another ethyl group. So you would call it diethyl ether. And diethyl ether is by far the most common of the ethers. All right, it comes in a metal can and stuff like that. This would be dimethyl ether because we have two methyl groups, one on each side. You don't have to have them be the same. Here we have a methyl group. Here's an ethyl group. Ethyl comes before methyl. So this is ethyl methyl ether. <laughs> 
Uh, diethyl ether used to be something you could buy at Fred Meyers, but then once the meth epidemic started kicking in, they pulled that from the shelves. And now you need a special license to purchase diethyl ether. Um, we have some at Mount Hood because in organic chemistry, diethyl ether is actually a great solvent. It boils a lot lower than water, and it's actually pretty polar. But it's not something that's easy to get now. Thanks, druggies. Anyway, <clears throat> so that's the old school way of naming the ethers. But there's a new way. Woohoo! Isn't there always? <clears throat> In a new way of talking about it, you look for the smaller alkyl chain. So in this example right here, we have an ethyl and a propyl group. Well, ethyl is two carbons and propyl is three. So ethyl is the smaller one. And the smaller one, you give it an oxy suffix. So this would become, this becomes an eth oxy. And this part is then named as an alkane, like we saw earlier with some of the glycols. So this would be propane. <clears throat> now, this ethyl group, this ethoxy group, is off the first carbon. So this compound would officially be called 1-ethoxypropane. You could have a methyl group connected to an oxygen, and the longest chain is 3, 2-methoxypropane. Here's methoxy, ethane, stuff like that. This is the newer way, so just FYI. I'm going to leave you with this little thing, which is a cup in my office. You ether, get organic chemistry, or you don't. Oh. <laughs> All right, I'm done. I'm walking off the stage now. Okay, we'll take up more of this on Monday. I'll see you, uh, most of you at one o'clock. Have a good day.